number of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a pistil. So pollination is the process of transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a pistil. So now here in this slide, you can see that uh, the anther can dust the pollen grains to the stigma of the same flower. This process we call it as uh, the self-pollination. If it is cross-pollination, so it might be carried by a pollinating agent like here it is the honeybee. The honeybee carries the pollen grain from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower. So this transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a pistil within the same flower or another flower of the same species, we call it as pollination. So here in the photograph, you can see the abdomen of the honeybee is dusted with pollen grains. So when they visit another flower of the same species, so the pollen grain falls onto the stigma, they germinate and they undergo further fertilization process. So the types of pollination. So based on the source of pollen, pollination is of three types. Autogamy pollination, that is self-pollination, then gaitenogamy, xenogamy. So autogamy, self-pollination, this usually happens in flowers which never bloom. So we call those flowers as cleistogamous flowers. And in this cleistogamous flowers, both the andricium and gynecium mature at the same time. So the maturation of andricium and gynecium is at the same time and it facilitates the transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma. That can happen when the flowers are closed flowers as cleistogamous flowers are always closed and there is a simultaneous maturation of andricium and gynecium. Both of them mature together. As a result of that, the pollen grain of the anther, when it falls to the stigma, they are going to undergo uh, germination and they bring about fertilization. So this is called as autogamy or self-pollination. So there is gaitenogamy is a process where uh, the pollen grain from uh, one flower is transferred to the uh, stigma of another flower within the same plant. So it is not within the same flower, it is within the same plant, different flowers, but within the same plant. So that we call it as gaitenogamy. Xenogamy is cross-pollination, that is pollen grain from one flower is transferred to the stigma of another flower of a different plant of the same species. Another flower, stigma of another flower in an, another plant. So we call that as gaiteno, the xenogamy. So these are the three types of pollination. So based on the source of pollen, the pollination is of three types. So the slide is a very good way of understanding it. So autogamy means self, auto means self. So autogamy is self-pollination. What you notice here is uh, the pollen grain from the uh, anther is transferred to the stigma of the same flower. So the pollination is brought within the same flower. When can this autogamy happen? When the flowers never bloom. So we call them as cleistogamous flowers. And in cleistogamous flowers, andricium and gynecium mature at the same time. They mature at the same time. As a result of that, the pollen grain from the anther falls to the stigma of the same flower and self-pollination occurs. That is one method. In gaitenogamy, so pollen grain from the anther of one flower is transferred to stigma of another flower of the same plant. See, the plant is same, but flowers are different. It is almost equivalent to self-pollination. So this type of pollination, where there is a transfer of pollen grain from one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same plant, we call it as gaitenogamy. In xenogamy, the transfer of pollen grains from uh, one plant the anther of one plant to the stigma of another plant, we call it as xenogamy. So this is more of a perfect cross fertilization, cross pollination is taking place. So at any point of time, you have any doubt students, you can switch on the mic and you can ask me the questions, okay? So I'll explain it then and there itself. Now let us describe, understand these pollination in detail. Autogamy, I've already told you, 
it is self pollination so the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower so we call it as autogamy so in uh, what type of flowers do you notice the self pollination in flowers which are exposed anthers and stigma with exposed anthers and stigma complete autogamy is rare so that is flowers which have bloomed so early on the vua so there you can't notice self pollination it is very rare condition because when they are exposed the flowers have bloom anthers and stigma are exposed okay as a result expecting complete self pollination in a bloomed flower it is not possible autogamy generally takes place in flowers uh, so in flowers where there is synchronization of pollen release and stigma receptivity that is both andrisium and gynecium should mature at the same time so autogamy is possible in such flower where there is a synchronization whether a synchronization or at the same time onde sala pollen grain release agate stigma no active agirate so so only when there is a synchronization in pollen release as well as stigma receptivity so that is we call it as homogamy uh, that is uh, the uh, pollen andrisium also matures at the same time as that of gynecium so that uh, homogamy nature is noticed in those flowers you can notice self pollination also anthers and stigma should be close to each other so for self pollination to occur so anthers and stigma should be close to each other not far away from each other so autogamy is seen in plants like viola so viola is a uh, ornamental plant we call it as common pansy see can you see this viola plant so these are the common pansy plant so uh, in this plant you can notice this self pollination so they would be having casmogamous flowers as well as cleistomergamous flowers so then oxalis ibuli soap you might have seen the green ones with uh, three leaves okay even here uh, you can notice this oxalis then comelina bengalensis see this is the comelina plant you can notice that they have a casmogamous flower and cleistogamous flowers cleistogamous flowers they never bloom and you can notice this cleistogamous flower is almost at the soil region you find this cleistogamous flowers casmogamous flowers they are bloomed and uh, they uh, undergo more of uh, cross pollination casmogamous flowers so plants like viola which is commonly called as common pansy oxalis ulisopu and comelina comelina bengalensis they produce two types of flower casmogamous flower which is aerial and cleistogamous flowers which never bloom flowers which never bloom we call it as cleistogamous flowers so they are found at the soil level or soil region so casmogamous flower they are similar to flowers of other species with exposed anthers and stigma so casmogamous flowers they are also bloom and they are similar to other flowers with both anthers and stigma exposed in cleistogamous flowers they do not open at all they do not bloom so the cleistogamous flower they never bloom anthers and stigma lie close to each other they are autogamous that is they undergo self pollination when anthers dehisce in the floral buds close floral buds pollen grains come in contact with stigma of the same floral bud for pollination so cleistogamous flowers produce assured seed set even in the absence of pollinator so self pollination is not dependent upon uh, the insects so even in the absence of pollinators the agents which uh, causes pollination we call them as pollinators even in the absence of pollinators there is assured seed production in cleistogamous flowers cleistogamous leads to inbreeding depression continuous self pollination for many generation it leads to inbreeding depression so you should also remember these points might be given in your neat or ct examination so the inbreeding depression is noticed in cleistogamy gamus flower casmogamus flower so which are both of them or none of them so which is the answer that you 
choose so cleistogamous flowers leads to inbreeding depression so the cleistogamous flower leads to inbreeding depression even you might have read about this inbreeding depression in uh, the animal uh, breeding and improvement of crops and plants plants and animals you might have studied about this where homozygous animal to get the pure line continuously they are crossed with the uh, the homozygous uh, things and that leads to continuous homozygosity for many three to four generation it leads to inbreeding depression not only there even the cleistogamous flower uh, leads to inbreeding depression then gaitinogamy so i have already told you it is a transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same plant so this picture itself is sufficient to describe gaitinogamy from the anther of one flower uh, to the stigma of another flower of the same plant so it is called as gaitinogamy it is functionally cross pollination but involving a, a pollinating agent but it is genetically similar to autogamy so this statement can be asked uh, which type of pollination is functionally cross pollination but genetically similar to autogamy so xenogamy gaitinogamy cleistogamy chasmogamy so the answer is gaitinogamy so gaitinogamy is a uh, functionally cross pollination but genetically it is similar to autogamy it's a type of self pollination only thing here is there is an involvement of a pollinator it can be an insect it can be water it can be wind so that is what happens so what is gaitinogamy transfer of pollen grain from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower within the same plant so this two flowers are present in the same plant it is not two different plants two different plants if it had happened we used to call it as cross pollination that is why seeing this gaitinogamy is uh, functionally cross pollination as it involves a pollinating agent but physiologically genetically it is similar to autogamy okay then we have this uh, pre fertilization structures and events we have the next one that is xenogamy so xenogamy is equivalent to cross pollination so the transfer of pollen grains from anther of one plant to the stigma of another plant we call it as uh, cross pollination or xenogamy xenogamy is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of a different plant or you can say it in much more uh, better way the uh, process of transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one plant to the stigma of another plant's flower so we call it as the xenogamy so it is genetically different pollen grains to the stigma it brings genetically different pollen grains to the stigma and you know that variations and mutations they are raw material for evolution the more variations vyatyasagala organism al iddashtu their survival capacity is more and they can adapt to different conditions so variations is a raw material for uh, the uh, evolution to take place so it brings this cross pollination brings genetically different pollen grain to the stigma that is the advantage of this xenogamy now agents of pollination so different agents are there for pollination so there are different agents for pollination so you should remember about uh, what are those agents abiotic agents they are non living agents wind and water are examples for abiotic agents which brings about pollination see this you might have seen in your samsung mobile phone screen dandelion flowers where when the wind blows there is a seed dispersal this seed will have this parachute mechanism if you look at them there is a fruit within this persistent calyx and the calyx is hairy so this uh, hair like structures is nothing but the sepals they are hairy so this is noticed in sunflower family especially so the dispersal of seeds and fruit is by this uh, parachute mechanism uh, 
so you can notice that there so the abiotic agents which brings about pollination are wind and water see in case of uh, this is a seed or fruit dispersal not pollination see wind generally they pollinate this uh, monocotyledonous plants like grasses they carry the pollen grains see if a plant is uh, going to be cross they are going to undergo pollination by uh, wind they are colorless flowers they are not colorful wind doesn't get attracted to color nectar or aroma that's the reason most of the monocotyledonous plants or flowers of grasses they are not colorful they do not they are not aromatic and uh, the pollen grain produced are dry and powdery so that they can be easily carried by the wind and they are produced in large numbers because when they are carried by the wind chances of many of the pollen grains being lost is more so they produce the pollen grains in large number so the abiotic agents for pollination are wind and water in case of aquatic plants like vallisneria water is a pollinating agent okay so biotic agents are living organisms which bring about pollination so it can be insects if insects brings about pollination we call it as entomophilous flowers entomophilous entomophilous plants see entomophilous plants they are very colorful petals they also have uh, the nectar in them so the sugary secretion of flower we call it as nectar honey bees many of the insects are attracted to the nectar that is present in the flowers in the second slide you can see the hummingbird the smallest bird which can also fly backwards so this hummingbird is suckling the nectar from the flower so during this process they also bring about pollination so bats are also going to pollinate flowers see there are bats which are frugivores what do you mean by frugivores they feed on fruits of plants so though these bats are called as frugivores you might have heard the term herbivore carnivore there is also a term frugivore where they feed on uh, the fruits of the plants now the monkey is also uh, has that position to bring about the uh, pollination in flowers so zoophily we call it as if it is through the insect pollination is brought about it's a biotic factor so the insect pollination we call it as entomophily if in the pollination is brought about by birds like hummingbird so we call it as ornithophily if pollination is brought about by bat we call it as chiropterophily so if pollination is brought about by animals we call it as zoophily okay so these are all the different ways of pollination that it is brought about so even the arboreal rad rodents reptiles they also bring about pollination so these are the pollinating agents so pollinating agents are of two type abiotic agents that is wind and water biotic agents like insects birds bats primates that is the apes monkeys okay arboreal rodents like uh, the squirrel reptiles etc they are all uh, the biotic agents which brings about pollination so you should also understand one more aspect uh, the abiotic agents wind when they are bringing about pollination we call that as anemophily so if pollination is brought about by wind so we call that as anemophily the word animo is derived from derived from the word anemometer anemometer is an instrument used to measure the velocity of wind so whenever we use the word anemophily don't say it as animal pollinated so it is derived from the word anemometer anemometer is an instrument used to measure the velocity of wind so pollination if it is brought about by wind we call it as anemophilous flowers okay it is the most common abiotic agent and wind pollinated flowers they have a single ovule in each ovary and numerous flowers packed into an inflorescence see the uh, they have the wind pollinated flowers uh, they have single ovule in each ovary and numerous flowers packed into an inflorescence uh, 
they have an inflorescence you can have, you might have seen the inflorescence of sugarcane sugarcane is the sweetest grass isn't it so uh, they have to trap a large amount of pollen grain that is found carried by the wind so they require numerous flowers and they should be present in an inflorescence so inflorescence is also an ad adaptation by wind pollinated plants example corn cob the tassels see here in case of maize the corn cob that is the tassels this uh, uh, spring layer you can call it as the corn cob or the tassels are the stigma and style so this is nothing but stigma and style which wave in the wind to spread to trap the pollen grains okay wind pollination is quite commonly noticed in grasses so the ways for effective wind pollination are flowers produce large number of pollen grains pollen grains are dry light and non sticky because they are carried by this wind they should be light in nature they should be dry okay they often possess well exposed <coughs> stamens for easy dispersion of pollens into wind current see if you see most of the times uh, the seesaw mechanism is there in the anthers versatile anthers you notice in case of monocot plants it is almost like seesaw mechanism whenever the wind moves the anther lobes also moves and they disperse the pollen grain okay so the uh, dispersion of pollens into wind currents there is a well exposed stamens so the large feathery stigma is present in the uh, gynecium to trap the airborne pollen grain so do you find the large feathery stigma in these uh anemophilous plants and they are meant to trap the uh, air carried pollen grains so the feathery stigma is meant for that purpose next we'll go for us pollination brought about by water we also call it as hydrophily so the abiotic agent second abiotic agent that we are discussing about is water pollination brought about by water is called hydrophily it is very rare hydrophily is not frequently seen it is limited to about 30 genera 30 genera mostly monocotyledons they are undergoing this um, water pollination especially the submerged plants they have given the example valisneria you can notice in the first slide it is the valisneria so in the first slide male and female plants are separate so they are dioecious so male and female plants valisneria so they are called as tape grass or ribbon grass plant because they have long leaves which look like a ribbon okay so it is quite rare hydrophily is quite rare and it occurs only in 30 genera which belongs to monocotyledons example is valisneria see this is valisneria is a submerged plant hydrilla fresh water both of them are fresh water they are submerged farms uh, submerged plants jostera the marine sea grass is also a submerged plant but in lower plants water is a regular mode of transport for the male gametes like bryophytes and pteridophytes uh, the water is required for transferring the pollen grain from the anthridium to the archegonium distribution of some bryophytes and pteridophytes is limited because they require water for the transport of male gametes for fertilization so this necessity water necessity for transfer of pollen grains to the the that is the sperm cells or anthrozoites to the uh, female egg cell so it requires water so because water is not available everywhere so pteridophyte and bryophytes distribution is limited as they have a lack water for the transport of male gametes and fertilization that point you have to remember about so now the water pollination will study some example in valisneria valisneria is a submerged plant i told you commonly it is called as uh, the uh, ribbon uh, plant or tape grass they call it as they have long leaves just like a ribbon tape okay so they are dioecious they have two types of plant male plants and female plants see in this first slide you can see that male flowers are dislocated from the male plant uh, 
and they accumulate at the top of the water. Female flowers are present on top of the water. So the pedicel is going to be spirally coiled and they bring the female flower to the surface of water. So the male flowers surround the female flowers and through the water pollen grain from the male flower is carried to the uh, stigma of the female flower. So the pollination is brought about by water in case of this Vallisneria, male and female Vallisneria plant. So in Vallisneria, the female flower reaches the surface of the water by the long stalk and the male flowers of pollen grains are released on to the surface of water. So they are carried by water currents and reach the female flowers. Similarly, in sea grass, so female flowers remain submerged in water. Pollen grains are long and ribbon-like. They are carried inside the water and reach the stigma. So the pollen grains of most of the water pollinated species, they have a mucilaginous covering to protect from wetting. See the pollen grains should be protected itself from water. So that is the reason they have a mucilaginous covering which protects them from becoming wet in aquatic plants. Not all aquatic plants use hydrophily. See there is example of water hyacinth. Water hyacinth is an aquatic plant but pollination is brought about by insect there. So even water lily, lotus, even though they are aquatic plants or hydrophytes, they exhibit uh, pollination by uh, the insect, the honeybees and insect, okay? So in most of aquatic plants, water hyacinth, water lily, the flower is going to emerge above the water for entomophily or even for animophily, that is wind pollination. And one important point that you have to remember is wind and water pollinated flowers are not very colorful and they do not produce nectar because as I already told you, uh, the, uh, the wind and water pollinated, they are abiotic agents. So the wind doesn't require any uh, reward mechanism, but for insects, they require some reward to bring about pollination. So they have nectar, so they have uh, the the colorful flowers and aromatic flowers. So the wind and water pollinated flowers are not very colorful and they do not produce nectar. See biotic agents, if they bring about pollination, so uh, we call it as uh, biotic pollination. So animals, are used by majority of flowering plants. The example is insects are utilized a lot for pollination. So insect pollinated flowers, we call it as entomophilus flower. If pollination is brought about by insect, we call it as entomophily. If pollination is brought about by snail, so we call it as malacophily. If pollination is brought about by bat, we call it as chiropterophily. If pollination is brought about by um, the birds, we call it as ornithophily. If pollination is brought about by insect, entomophily. If pollination is brought about by wind, animophily. If pollination is brought about by water, we call it as hydrophily. If pollination is brought, is brought about by snail, we call it as malacophily. So they are the different types of pollinations brought by different pollinating agents. So the biotic agents are animals, which includes from insects to birds to uh, the primates, all of them are included under the uh, animals. So biotic pollination is used by majority of flowering plants. Example for the wind, the insect pollinated flowers brought about by bees, butterfly, flies, beetles, wasp, ants, moths, birds, see sunbirds and hummingbirds, bats, then primates like lemurs, arboreal tree-dwelling rodents like squirrels, reptiles like gecko lizard and garden lizard, they all bring about pollination. And this pollination by animals, we call it as zoophily, okay? So pollination by insect is called as entomophily, particularly bees are more common and also you should remember often 
the flowers are going to be animal pollinated plants they are specially adapted for a particular species of animal not every species for a particular species of animal they are adapted to so the features of insect pollinated flowers what do you notice in insect pollinated flowers how do the insects get attracted to this flowers so three rewarding mechanism i told you are existing in uh, plants one is nectar the sugary secretion of flower we call it as nectar second aspect is uh, they are having the colorful flowers that also gets attracts the insect third aspect is the fragrance the aroma of the flowers that also attracts the insects towards the flower so it's a symbiosis so the insect gets the reward in the form of nectar and the insects bring about pollination so pollination brought about by insects we call it as entomophily let us understand what are the features of insect pollinated flowers see the insect pollinated flowers are large colorful fragrant that is aromatic and rich in nectar so nectar and pollen grains are the floral rewards for pollination so nectar and pollen grains are the floral rewards for pollination so small flowers they are going to form in floresses to make them in uh, visible to the insect the flowers pollinated by flies and beetles they secrete very bad smell foul odor to attract these animals that is flies and beetles the pollen grains are sticky because they have to stick on to the body surface of these insects uh, they are wet and sticky the pollen grains are generally sticky so the, when the animals that is like insect or snails they come in contact with the anthers and the stigma it body gets pollen grain so when it comes in contact with the stigma the pollen grains are dusted on it and it results in pollination of the flower see some plants they provide some reward mechanism for pollination so some plants provide safe places as floral reward to lay eggs example is the tallest flower not the largest the tallest flower is amorphophallus titanum so it is around 6 feet tall this flower so a moth species and the plant yucca so you can, they cannot complete their life cycles without each other see a moth species and yucca so you can see the moth here they cannot complete their life cycles without each other there is so much symbiosis relationship the moth deposits its egg in the locule of ovary the flower gets pollinated by the moth the larvae come out of the eggs as seeds start developing so the flowers get pollinated by the moth the larvae come out of the eggs as seeds start developing so that is how symbiotic relationship is there uh, to bring uh, to attract the insects to get about the pollination so there are some insects which consume pollen or nectar without bringing any pollination so these insects which consume pollen or nectar without bringing about pollination we call them as pollen or nectar robbers so the insects which uh, consume pollen or nectar without bringing about pollination we call or call them as pollen or nectar robbers kaldru antam pollen or nectar robbers we call them as so next we'll dis uh, discuss about is outbreeding devices okay so uh, outbreeding devices how does it happen so that uh, so i'll just require a 5 minutes of break i'll be back so the outbreeding devices will start with <laughs> 